made Call of the Arbiter is about destiny. It's about characters who have to make a decision about who they're going to become. To see the emotion and to see the action all together is something that I almost can't even put into words. The size of this world is pretty special. After three years of work from like the initial concept to getting to the point where we can show it to the world, that's kind of like the biggest moment of this whole thing so far. And I ask myself, okay, what about these characters can I bring where the audience is going to cheer and stand up and, and fall in love with them? We felt it was really important to be true to the origins. We made this show because this is something that our players have been asking us for for a really long time. And we hope it has appeal to a broad audience. I am a massive fan of Raid Shadow Legends, been playing the game for about four years. I've probably played more hours than I care to admit. You know, on a given month, we're looking at around four million players. I think we passed a billion hours of, of gameplay collectively, something like a year and a half ago. So what attracts me to Raid Shadow Legends is there are different factions, such as like High Elves and Orcs and Ogres. So the game is all about collecting champions. We battle monsters and they live in the fantasy world of Teleria. As fans of the game, as players of the game, honestly, we always wanted more. Like, how did this world come to exist? There are really passionate fan bases. People are filling in their own fan stories. The tale of the dark elf, Altan of the Shell. There are people who make their own art. And we kept getting these comments. You guys should do a show. Why don't you guys do a show? How about an animated series? Like, I wanna hear more about these characters. I almost want there to be like a book about this, you know, or a yeah. movie or something. Lots of us have been asking for more story on these champions that we play every day. That's some lore I would like to see. I'll tell you, this is pretty hype. I really like the characters in this game. You know, after about a year, we're looking at like 10,000 comments saying, please do an animated series. And we thought, all right, you know, let's, let's take a look at what that would take. Let's go flesh it out and show them what the actual story is. First thing that we needed was a producer. We needed somebody who knows animation, who has the chops, who has the reputation, who can kind of bring the, the partners together to make this happen. When I was first approached about Raid by the Polarium team, uh, I was super excited because one of the things I love doing and I've done a, a bunch of in my career is reiterating IP and taking a successful mobile game and finding a way to adapt that into long form storytelling in a different medium is what I thrive on. Eric Rollman has a storied history in animation. You know, I saw the, 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 you know, the credits of this guy. I was like, hey, you produced my entire Saturday morning childhood. It's rare to come across something with 750 to 1,000 champions who are beloved by fans. And to be able to expand on that is really exciting, but also making those characters accessible for new viewers. Eric and I sat down and we said, all right, next step, writers. Jay Oliva and Kendall Deacon Davis were really the perfect team to help us honor the origins of Raid Shadow Legends. When we first sat down to bring these champions to life, we were so excited. For me, the opportunity to work on Raid was a dream come true because I live and I breathe fantasy. You couldn't pick anything bigger to work on than Raid. Raid is a game about battles, and who better to lead us on the vision of that than Jay? He's worked on incredible action franchises. We couldn't wait for the fans to see what we came up with. You know, one of the toughest challenges for this was making sure that whoever made this show knew the game. I mean, I'm a fan too. I've played the game since probably the first year. If you're a gamer, you certainly know the name Raid Shadow Legends. It carries a big footprint. It's made a lot of reverberations in pop culture. Death Knight, yo! Sorry, I, I was... Uh... Yeah, whatever. Don't forget to buff those scratches out, okay? The passion that Kendall brings to the storytelling side of this, you hear the way that he immerses us into this universe and you're in. 
As we were headed into the pitch, we came up with the idea of starting with Gallic's story, and we found a really strong character dynamic in terms of his relationship with his father and how he rescues this human child, this person who's the enemy. The way Jay and, and Kendall are telling this story, we were like, oh my God, like you know this game better than we do. And we knew in like five minutes that yeah, these are the guys. We knew if we wanted to make a show, you know, just to respect the legacy of the game, it has to be 3D to, to do it justice. We needed to go find the partner to do the animation for us. We really wanted to work with someone who was trying to do something different. Team Toe has a wide range of experience in action adventure and battle scenes and the fighting scenes. C'est la, la première partie dans le village en feu qui raconte en fait toute la. Their enthusiasm at Team Toe for working in dark fantasy like this gave me all the confidence they could level this thing up, and they have. Working on the Dark Fantasy show is kind of the holy grail for our team. The animators and the modelers were going above and beyond. The thing that I think really sold me on it was how much they wanted to do this. This was like a personal mission for them to show that they could do this. We felt like we were both working towards the same thing from the earliest conversations. So now we've got our production lined up, but we don't have one of the most important pieces, which is the score. And so we went to Jesper Kid. I think I'm known as someone who likes to write in atmosphere. The fantasy genre is something that I find very interesting, especially when you're asked to do something unusual for that genre. And that was what I was approached about on Call of the Arbiter, to do something that didn't sound like a typical fantasy score. When we asked him to do this project and he said yes, like we really felt like we won the lottery. Now that we've assembled the team, we look and we're like, oh, we're sitting on top of this global operation. We've got the production team based out of Los Angeles. We've got Team Toad in France. We've got the raid team in Ukraine. We've got our executive team in Israel. Production was literally going 24 seven. People were waking up while other people were going to bed. You know, it's a global production and we've got a global fan base. Let's welcome onto the stage, Jay Oliva. <laughs> One of the most nail biting moments of this whole project was when we released the teaser trailer at South by Southwest. It was really gratifying to, you know, to see the reception and the reaction, then to go on YouTube and to see just the raw, unbridled excitement that people have for the show. It looks really cool. This is absolutely amazing. Did you see Jizzo split that dude in half? Are you as excited about this as I am? It's something we've been asking for, but we never thought was gonna come. Like, this is just the teaser, guys. Think about a five minute episode. So episode one starts in this human village that the Orcas tribes have sacked. They're taking it back for themselves. They have been actually on the receiving end of human brutality and are reclaiming lands that are stolen from them. Gallic, this is justice. And we follow this raiding party led by Artak, the, the kind of chieftain of this particular raiding party. This used to belong to the clans. We are reclaiming what is rightfully ours. We meet Gallic, who's struggling with following in his father's footsteps. Gallic, this is not who you are. He receives a vision from the Arbiter that illuminates what his path forward might be. And this is where Gallic's presented with the choice. You know, he can fulfill his father's wishes, he can do what everyone expects him to do, or he can make a different choice. Gallic is well aware of the history of the Oryx and the humans, but something in him motivates him to rescue this child. He's tough, he's a warrior, he knows how to fight, but you know, underneath that grim, gruff exterior, you know, he's, he's got a heart. And he makes the most difficult decision to go against his father and go against his people to do what is right. Son, what are you doing? Making a choice. 
now he is responsible for this child. Every one of the characters that you're gonna meet has a theme, and this is where Jesper's score really gets to shine. So composing for Raid Call of the Arbiter, it's very much a focus on all the different characters. But this episode with Gaelic was definitely inspired by the raiding culture of, of Vikings. The focus on that episode was really to find how to do that shift when inside of himself there's this turmoil. He's doing something, but he's starting to realize he doesn't want to do it anymore. When that turmoil starts to happen, it really is felt in the music and the atmosphere. And when he finally makes the choice, the music really swells up. And, and all the Viking culture disappears, and we're now just totally following his inner feelings that he's now finally doing the right thing according to himself. One of the key ideas of Raid is that None of these factions are inherently good or bad. All of them are shades of gray. It all comes down to individuals and those choices. We've seen Gallic make the hardest choice he's ever had to make. He's answered the call of the Arbiter, and he's heading off into a future that is uncertain. Gallic was fun to create because he was a false character we built. Everybody knows Gallic, you know, Gallic is probably the face of Raid, and so we didn't want to be shy about showing who he really is. This is a model of Gallic. We have to add uh, scars, lips details, you can see the details on the skin here. Earrings, a beard on his hair. The little teeth he has on his beard. We had to make an orc look nice <laughs> inside a whole horde of orcs who are not nice. So the facial expressions of Gaelic were very important. I have to build the skeleton of the character, the muscle in the face, create uh, all the expression of the character. You can speak. I do not wish to fight you, father. I always like to embody the character. <laughs> <laughs> We have a fantastic voiceover artist who played Gaelic. That is the wrong answer. Seeing Gaelic was the first time that I got to see one of these characters fully fleshed out and, and acting in their own world, uh, and that was really special for me. The Onks are all characters from the games, but Artak. Let go, father. Artak is Gaelic's dad. The episode is the first time that you meet Artak, this new character, and now you're gonna get him in the game too. Now we're able to go take something from the show and put it back in the game. You're gonna see that in the coming weeks. We get to do that a couple times. These are not two entirely separate things. They're both closely connected. It is over. Not for me. When we were doing episode one, you know, we drew heavily from the renditions of human settlements that you see in the game. The first episode is taking place in a human village, so we start from basic uh, polygonal shapes, shape it to look like a house, and then place the house in the set. We had to add this kind of uh, detail and uh, make them look like real wood, real stone that had been worn out by the time. As a starting point, you know, we found all these real-world architectural elements, and for me it was really interesting seeing this world become real. This is the first taste of Tlir you get to see. All the little crooked streets and the alleys and the tile work and the architectural implementation of the, of the set design, like, this is what Teleria looks like. This episode set the tone, and then in the coming episodes of the next couple weeks, you're gonna see some of your favorite characters. I can't even tell you how long I wanted this to happen. This has been three years in the making. And hats off to Raid for putting this together for the community. We've got so many surprises and so many thrills in store for them. This is just the beginning. I'm properly psyched about this, guys. This just upped the notch to a completely different caliber. This is absolutely blowing my mind.